is it? Woo! What's up, Elevate? All right, so we have a tradition at Elevate. Every week, we remind ourselves of why we're here. I'll say Elevate, you say Jesus. Elevate! Jesus! Elevate! Jesus! Man, you guys are on fire. Welcome to the show tonight. It's going to be spectacular. We have some incredible acts. We have talent, we have humor, we have gymnastics, we have cringeworthy stuff. It's all going to be a blast. But before we get started, uh, if we could just bring the music down for a second, uh, I want to I want to focus in of why we're actually here tonight. And it might be for the fun, it might be for everything, but it elevates one purpose is to elevate Jesus. So if I could just have a few minutes of your time before we kick this thing off, I just want to celebrate the God that we worship tonight. And I want to open with discussing about who God is. If I was to say, who is God? Actually, let's change this around. What if a coworker asked you, who is God? How would you respond to that? If you're at school, man, I know you're one of those, those churchy people. Who is God? How would you respond to that? What would be some of the things that would go through your mind? How would you formulate your answer? Well, here's some of, some of the reflections that I'd like to share. First of all, God is infinite. God is perfect. And God is unchanging. And he has many attributes. And what's beautiful about God is that every one of his attributes are perfect and infinite and unchanging. And yet his attributes are not something that are not of himself. Think about it, a candle. A candle has heat, but heat is already its own thing, and a candle has a little. And yet all of God's attributes are of God himself. It is not like there is this force called justice, and God has a whole lot of it. It is that justice comes from God. He is the supreme source of all justice. God is love. He is perfect love. He is infinite love. He is unchanging love. He is also truth and goodness. He is wrath and holiness, justice, mercy, kindness, and so much more. And he, all of these things emanate from him. They are who he is, and they are the source. He is the source of them. And there is no attribute in him that is more than any other attribute. Even the best of us, if we wake up early, before our first cup of coffee, we may be a little, you know, short-tempered. Maybe if you think about, you know, someone that you know, maybe your boss, you might think of him as one quality greater than another. Maybe he's harsh or he's cheery. But in God, all of his attributes are infinite and perfect and unchanging. His attributes don't have changing degrees. He's not more love today and then more wrath tomorrow. Some of us could be really angry at someone in customer service today, and tomorrow we'll be really excited when we hear good news. And a lot of people think that God is this strict God in the Old Testament, and he's this gracious God in the New Testament, and yet his grace and his wrath are perfect. They are perfectly entwined in harmony with one another. God is also one. All of his attributes, they sound like different parts. In our human language, we describe them as different things, and yet God is one. All of his attributes are a single attribute. They are his godness. His sovereignty operates through all of his attributes. Everything that God does, all of his attributes are together in. I love what A.W. Tozer says. He says, see if you can follow this. All of God does all that God does. When he created, he did it through all of his attributes. When he called Abraham, set Israel free from Egypt, when he appointed King David, when he protected Esther and her people, all of God's attributes were present and at work. But now who are we? If this is who God is, who are we? I've got a little girl who's now four and a son who right now is three. They're two of five. And a year ago, she was three, he was two, and her name was Nadia. And one day I hear this screeching sound coming from the other room. And when I ran into the room, Nadia is behind Silas. 
And she has her arms around his neck. She has her legs around his waist. She's arching her back and stretching his body like some sort of jujitsu move. And he's turning red. He's not breathing. And I'm like, stop, stop. And I'm pulling her off. And I'm sort of like, high five. That was awesome. Don't ever do this again. At our core, as beautiful, innocent children, they have a tendency to be selfish and even a little bit cruel. And I think this is what William Golding was getting across when he wrote his book, Lord of the Flies. You take a whole bunch of innocent kids, you drop them off without supervision, and what comes out of the human nature is evil. It's harsh. These innocent kids at the beginning of the book are murdering by the end of the book. Who are we? Romans 7, 18 through 20, Paul writes and he says this, For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want to do is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin dwells within me. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then Paul answers his own question. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus, free from the law of sin and death. We are born sinners. There is nothing but sin in us. Everything in us has a tendency to, to degrade, to be harsh. My little kids are at the table spitting at each other. Well, they're mean. They make fun of each other. They're innocent. And yet they're not innocent. What comes out of them is evil. My kids need Jesus. <laughs> this description in Romans 7 could be summed up in these words. We're totally depraved from our inside out. Our selfish nature, and out of our selfish nature, we defy God's authority. And he has nothing but wrath and just punishment for us. And it gets even more critical. Those who recognize our selfishness, we're like, oh man, we got to get this right. It's like we're muddy, but we have filthy hands. We're trying to clean mud off, only making ourselves worse. And we come up with things, we're like, maybe if we do enough good stuff, we can get right. We say things like, if I can just kick this bad habit, if I just go to church more, if I donate to charity, if I do one good deed a day, if I can hold in my anger, if I can convince everyone I'm a great person, I can work my way into God liking me. But the sin nature is in us. Think about a carpenter. He could be the greatest, greatest carpenter in the world. He could be able to fashion this gorgeous table full of intricate design. But if he's working with rotted wood, at the end of his project, it will still be rotted. And so here we are. Every self-help book ever written is written about rotted wood. That's us. Oh, wretched man. Oh, wretched woman. Oh, sinful humans that we are. Who can deliver us from this body of death? And when our hearts, when our nature is compared to God, we're found totally lacking. And we are compared to God. Isaiah 64, 6, but we are like an unclean thing and all our righteousness is nothing more than filthy rags. The word righteousness in the Old Testament means equal, balanced. Think about Justice, Lady Justice with the balanced scales, that's what righteousness means. It's a word of justice. And the word iniquity, sin in the Old Testament, if you see the word iniquity, it means unequal. Iniquity, unequal. And what are we being compared to? What are we equal or unequal to? Those attributes of God. God's incredible, infinite, unchanging, perfect attributes. That's what we're being compared to. We're hopeless. We have nothing in and of ourselves, in and of ourselves. And it's in this crushing reality that Paul writes it. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? But God, from his holiness, from his holiness to eradicate sin. And with a word, he could erase all sin and us with it. Pff, gone. But he loves us. And our Father who loves us, who created us, created us to know Him, to love Him, to have a relationship with Him, to worship Him. And here we are, blind in our sin. We're so stuck in our sin that we don't even know we need help because we're so blind. 
And it's here that, that Paul also speaks to us about God's justice and his love. For God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, blind, hopeless, wretched, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through Jesus Christ that he would save it. All of God's attributes. Namely, think about his love and his wrath. They are perfectly poured out at the cross that Jesus would endure and carry the very wrath of God out of his great love for his people. And so these two things are not oil and water. They're not contradictory. They are perfect and perfectly expressed at the cross. And so if you're in this room and you haven't called on Jesus to be your savior, I challenge you, surrender to him, repent of your sin, turn to a God whose scales you can never live up to. Surrender your sin and live for him out of love for his death for you. Because he didn't just die. He rose again. It's what seals Christianity above every other faith, is that every other faith, every other religion has a prophet who's still in a grave somewhere. And whenever Jesus rose from the grave, everything he said was validated as perfect and infinite and unchanging. Oh, what a God we serve. God is perfect. He's infinite. He's unchanging as all of his attributes. We're born with a sin nature and we're hopeless under his wrath. But God became flesh himself and he took his punishment for our sin because of his great love for us. And anyone who believes in Jesus will be saved. Down in Brazil, there was a mother and a daughter and they were cut off from the city. They lived out in the country and her daughter looked forward to the day. Oh, the day that she would be able to leave home and move in to the big city. And her mother dreaded it. She knew what it took for young girls to survive. And the day came, and against all of her mom's pleadings, she left. And she left with very little. And she didn't come back. And we know from the other side of the story that her daughter did get sucked into everything her mother was afraid of. And so her mother could not sit by. Because out of her great love and out of her great hate for the very thing she knew her daughter was wrapped up in, her mother took action. And so she emptied her bank account, and with the very little that she had, she went to a photo booth, and she printed out as many pictures of herself as she could, and she cut out all the pictures of individuals, and she went into the city, and she began tucking them into the light poles of every corner on the red letter district and she would go to the bars and she would pin them up and she'd go to dirt cheap hotels and hourly hotels and she would stick them up on the tech boards just a picture of herself and one day her daughter was coming down the stairs from a motel and she saw a face that she recognized and it shocked her and when she pulled the little picture off the tech she flipped it over and read whatever you've done Whatever you've become, it doesn't matter. Please come home. And a daughter was reunited with her mom because her mom hated the sin and loved her so much that she took action and went to where she was. If that's you, if you're the daughter that was really determined, that wanted to worship your own life and have your own authority to be the master of of your own life and the commander and captain of your own ship. If that's you, you have a father that is calling you, that became the perfect image, the perfect visible image in Jesus Christ so that everyone could look to him and they would read a message on the cross and it says, whatever you did, whatever you become, come home, come home. Turn your eyes heavenward because you will see friendly eyes looking back at you. Give your life to Jesus tonight. Get yourself a Bible tomorrow and plug into a church this Sunday. He loves you. He wants more than just a life insurance religion for you. He wants you to have a relationship with a perfect, infinite, unchanging God. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the reuniting of a mother and her daughter, one that we get to look at and remember how much you love us. Oh, Lord, that we would celebrate. And if there's anyone in here who does not know you, call them, prick their hearts, and may they see your face. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And it is with great pleasure that I would like to turn it over to the many people that made this happen and begin our show tonight. For tonight, my, my name is Nate Fry. Uh, I'm returning from last year, last year's MC. Uh, pre be prepared to be hyped by dancing, tickled by shenanigans, and awed by talent tonight. This year's contest will feature 10 contestants, and 10 acts, and 22 contestants, which will be judged in two ways by you, the audience, and our illustrious judges. When you walk in, you should have received a pamphlet with all of the contestants and the acts' names on it. All right, at the end of, at the, end of the 10th, at the end of the 10th act, you will scratch off two, two of your favorite, two of your favorite acts, and then we will add up what the judges did and what you got, okay? So as we go on, our first judge will be Miss Jenny McCharge. We are thrilled to have Miss Jenny McCharge as the judge this evening. As you well know, Jenny was a world-renowned music producer and songwriter with varied success throughout the musical journey. Jenny has written and produced classics such as Blame It on the Rain, and Millie Vanilli, the hit song Cha Cha Slide by DJ Casper. And of course, because everyone is looking forward to the weekend, her well known hit Friday by Rebecca Black. <laughs> Please give a round of applause for Jenny McCharge. Our second judge is Mr. Shane Scott. Shane was born on the bayou with the gift of coordination and a passion for dance from an early age. He traveled the world to master his craft and become an authority in the five elements of, da of dance, body, breath, space, time, and energy. His passion for dancing, love for the South, and, and predisposition toward the Irish masterful came together when he created the much celebrated Bayou River Dance. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a taste of his rhythm and style tonight. And our last and final judge, Mr. Greg Mito. Greg was once on a mission trip in the Himalayas with his youth group show choir where he sang the leading role in the soprano section. He was there on the mountaintop in Tibet when he decided to take a year-long vow of silence in order to gain a deeper understanding of his serenity with Jesus. When Greg spoke in his first time at no completion of his commitment of silence, he was a soprano no more. He had been gifted by God with his honey-soaked voice of angels. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Mito. All right, our 10 acts tonight will be vying for the number one spot in this year's competition. There will be four 
I repeat four prizes tonight. First prize. Six tickets to break in the code. Our second prize will be six tickets to laser tag in New Orleans. Our third prize will be six tickets to, to the Swamp, the Swamp Bounce House, and the fourth prize will be six foot candy bar. A literal six foot candy bar. And without further ado, our first stack, Sanctified Six.
Awesome, 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 awesome. Get you guys up here with me for a second. Come up here, come up here. I was, that was good, right, guys? Give it up for him again. Give it up for him again. Okay. As a reminder, we want to make sure everyone's respectful toward our acts. They worked hard towards these acts, and um, support is good. Support is good. Um, so who, who was my lead singer? Who was my lead singer just now? What went into you guys picking this song? Um, we wanted a loud, good song to start off. <laughs> How appropriate, right? Obviously. But um, just really praises him, and it's a good, good song to get into. Awesome. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Just as a reminder, also, the judges will score 1 through 10. We will take the, the contestant scores and take half from them and take half from you guys, and we'll tie that up at the end, and that's how we'll get our winners. Let's start with Mr. Greg Might over here on the left. What you got, Mr. Greg? Got any comments? Um, yeah, it was, it was really good. It was... Um, <clears throat> I gave a point for each sunglasses, um, so that, that was, uh, I was kind of taken from that point, and um, I, it, it was, uh, I, I enjoyed, do I show the score now, do I? You can show it now, yes sir. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, okay, uh, nine, that's, uh, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, Miss Jenny, what you got, what you got for us? All right, can you hear me? First of all, as Rock and Rhonda, I love you guys. Listen, you were jamming, you were rocking, your heads were going, you got the crowd involved. I was clapping my hands, I was smacking my neighbors here. I was like, let's sing. We caught on, we knew the lyrics. Sydney, when you went down that catwalk, I was like, yes. I needed you to jump and scream and yell, because I know there's a rocker inside of you. Hey, sweet dude with the, with the little riff, the little solo, was nice. It was nice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need you to smile and own that riff. Look. I'm going, I'm going big, I'm going big, because I'm all about the rock. I'm giving you guys the 10. Woo! Our first 10 of the night with the first group. Congratulations. All right, Sugar Shane, what you got for us, baby? Yeah, what I you got? I agree more with those guys. The glasses, you rocked it. The solos, out of this world, you like little slashes out there. I, you probably know who this way before your time. But anyways, you guys were awesome. Uh, I also gave you a 10. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. With a score of 29. Not bad, y'all. Not bad. Way to start, way to start. All right, thank you. All right, next up, we have Promised Land. Give it up for Promised Land, everybody. Just had to try it one time. I just wanted to see. Okay, are you so? Are you a gymnast? Do you, do you are, are you in gymnastics or a dancer? What's your, what's your background? Tell us about it. I used to do gymnastics, and then I did acro, which is like a type of dance. And how long have you doing that for? Two years. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Very impressed. Very impressed. All right, we're gonna start off with Mr. Shane this time and work about work our way back to Mr. Greg. 
I thought, actually, I'm kind of in pain right now after watching that. That just seemed like it hurt, but wow, I, we were all kind of backing up as we were watching this. Uh, but outstanding, I don't know what that's supposed to look like, but it looked like it was painful, but it also looked like you knew exactly what you were doing, so I'm going to give you a nine. A great first score, great first score. Good. Miss Jenny, what you got for us? My love, your control. You were so neat and so precise. I thought one day I was gonna be a gymnast, but I'm not. I'm rocking Rhonda. But you, my friend, you went up there and you were just beautiful. I mean, every move was graceful. You were poised. You, you used the stage greatly. I thought you were beautiful. Kudos to you, because I could never bend and stretch and move like that. Even though when I was little, I wanted to. I'm giving you a nine. It's a great score. Huge words from a legend, you might take those with you. Greg, what you got? Unlike uh, Rock and Ronda, I had no point once to be a gymnast in my life, believe it or not. Oh, um, that was painful. I, I mean, I, uh, it was amazing what you to do. I, I mean, I'm amazed you could do that. That was, uh, wow. Are you in pain? I'm just genuinely curious. That, wow, okay, yeah, that's a... Uh, she's prepared. That's she's, a wrap, she's yeah. Conditioned. Um, she's conditioned. That's why we can't uh, do it, but she can. It's, uh, yeah, let's go... Uh, eight, 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 eight. Eight, eight, that's good. That's pretty good. Awesome. Good job, baby. All right, give it up for her again. All right, next up we have Cha-Cha Chipmunk. I don't know why I expected a Kia Soul to pull up at some point. All right, Jenny, we're going to start with you. Starting with me. First of all, I'm thinking that took a lot of guts and a lot of courage to come out and be cha-cha chipmunk. So, we're, we're, so we were having a conversation about the fanny pack. Any, any significance? Oh, do you have treats, treasures, gems, confetti? Bro, is that peanuts, bro? Oh, my goodness. Oh, don't mind if I do. He's trying to bribe you. Be careful. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's coming down to see us. Uh-oh. 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 What are we getting? Thanks. Oh. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Cha-Cha Chipmunk. You hey, no bribing, bro. Get back I up know, here. Right? Like, it's a good thing I'm not allergic to these bad boys, but I do love me some little peanuts. And, you know, Cha-Cha Chipmunk, I think you're just the cutest little thing ever. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, you up your game next year just a little bit. You know, maybe, I don't know, but I thought it was cute. I'm giving you a seven. Seven? I'm bad. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. All right, we're going to go with Mr. Shane next. Well, man, I like the swag. I mean, you got it up there. You were just moving around, acting like you were on the stage. I thought it was really cool. You walked down the aisle. You were unashamed, unafraid, and the strangest fanny pack I've ever seen. But, hey, I'll give you an eight, man. All right, Greg, take it away, man. What you got? All right, I was uh, thoroughly confused from beginning to end, but um, it was a great time. I love the energy. Really love the fanny pack, but I got to say, what stole the show, these peanuts, guys. I mean, crunch, flavor, the perfect amount of salt. Ah, oh, 
I gotta give it an eight. I'm, I'm so honored. <laughs> All right, man. Good job, Cha-Cha. Get out of here. All right, next up, we have We Are Gonna Be Friends. Give it up. We Are Gonna Be Friends. Here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes, walk in blues, climb the fence, books and pens. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. Walk with me, Susie Lee, through the park and by the tree. We will rest upon the ground and look at all the bugs we found. Safely walk to school without a sound. Safely walk to school without a sound. Here we are, no one else. We walk to school all by ourselves. There's dirt on our uniforms from chasing all the ants and worms. We clean up and now it's time to learn. We clean up and now it's time to learn. Numbers, letters, learn to spell Nouns and books and show and tell Playtime, we will throw the ball Back to class, through the hall Teacher marks our height against the wall Teacher marks our height against the wall And we don't notice any time pass We don't notice anything Side by side in every class Teacher thinks that I sound funny But she likes the way you sing Tonight I'll dream while I'm in bed And silly thoughts go through my head About the bugs and alphabet And when I wake tomorrow I'll bet That you and I will walk together again I can tell that we are gonna be friends Yes, I can tell that we are gonna be friends Hey, that was great, man. That was great. That was great. Come on, let's get let's get a little bit closer to the crowd. So I'm actually like I asked the first group, what, what went into you picking that song? Is that one of your favorite songs? You like listen to that song? I, what went into picking that song? Well, uh, one night I was just uh, sitting at an Elevate sermon, and uh, you know I just felt the courage to come up here and do this. This, yes, this is one of my favorite songs. Um, I said it's been a long time since I've done something like this, so I said, hey, why not put myself out there? <laughs> That's beautiful, man. I like that. I really, really do. You felt the courage, you felt called to do, and you went and did it. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, we're going to start with Mr. Greg first. Wow. That was, uh, that was great, man. Oh, um, my. You got a good voice. I, lo I, I like the courage, man. It was, uh, you really showed out there. I'm, uh, I hope we can be friends, man. Here's a nine. You did very well. Hey, you can be friends with Greg. You got a nice, nice. Here we go, Jenny. What you got for us? First of all, Sawyer, you were precious. I love that in between some of the lyrics, you even smiled and you were like, yeah. So you felt good about the song, we felt good about the song, and Greg and I, we're going to be friends because of your song. So thank you, thank you. Sawyer, I thought it was really sweet. I'm giving you an eight. Awesome. I'm an eight. That's really, really good. Shane? Hey, Sawyer, great job, man. Way to, be, way to put yourself out there. Uh, I thought you did a phenomenal job. Uh, Blew my expectations out of the water. Excellent job. I'm going to give you a nine. Guys, give it up for Soy. Give it up for Soy. All right, we go. Next up, we have... I hope these, these, these babies ain't scared of the dark. Baby, baby!
gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! Baby, baby, I'm taken with the notion To love you with the sweetest of devotion Baby, baby, my tender love will flow from The bluest sky to the deepest ocean Stop for a minute, baby, I'm so glad you're mine It's the same All right, you guys stay right there because I think it will make for a better interview that way. Okay. Oh, this is super creative. I really like this. Y'all some big head babies. What made y'all think about doing this? Because I've literally never seen anything like this before. We'll let the lady of the group speak. Can you get my binky? All right. There you go. I'm not grabbing all y'all binkies. Greg, go ahead and take it away, man. Um. Greg is easily wild. My friend Greg is wild. You're wild. I know. I, I didn't know what was happening. Um, then there were babies. It was it was dark, and then there were babies, and they were uh, it, they were dancing. You remember it? It was. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I, I'm very happy it happened. I don't know why it happened, but I'm very, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the results. You know. Um, I don't know how it could have been better. I mean, very uh, honestly, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that, that's the time. Right? Yeah. All right, Jenny. I felt the need to want to participate. I wanted to do all the moves. I wanted to do the circle of life. And then you brought in the, the, the Kung Fu Ninja song. I uh, Help me think of it. What's the real name of it? Kung Fu Fighting. Kung Fu Fighting. I was like, yes. And Greg said, they did not go there. I said, yes, they did. They went Kung Fu Fighting. It was great. It was a lot of fun. I was thoroughly entertained. You guys are going places. But I have one small tip. I spoke to your parents before, and they said, listen to your parents. <laughs> Giving you a 10. Woo! All right, before we move to Shane, y'all coming out for a second. I got a question. Y'all come on out. Come out. Come on. Yeah, come on. Yep, come on out. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on out. I think, I think the audience... Oh, oh, the babies look so different. I thought there were babies. It's, it's, a, it's a whole new... It was an 
I just want to know where y'all got the idea from, because I've never seen this before. Are, are you just woke up one morning and you thought to build a little baby costume with little small legs? Like, I had this crazy idea, and so I woke up one morning, like you said, and I went to talk to my best baby friend right there, Luke Corns, and we decided that this is a great act. This would please the people, you know, y'all the people. We love y'all. All right, Shane, last judge, take it away, man. Uh, I think you guys were creative, very original. Um, I mean, dinosaurs and Elmo got me, sold me. Ten guys. <laughs> Woo! All right, guys, give it up for baby, baby. All right, our last act before the break, Pirates of the Caribbean. Great job, my guy. Great job, my guy. Hey, you chose to play a legendary song, bro. You know that, right? Hey, that, that took courage. Took courage. What made you want to pick this song? Uh, I don't know. I just thought it sounded cool. I thought that whenever I could play it, it sounded, it sounded a lot better. I promise. <laughs> you did a great job, man. We loved it. We loved it. All right, Shane, you want to start us off this time? Yeah, look, man, uh, the first thing I noticed was you got the coolest hair in the room. Definitely an A for that. Cool guitar, cool get up. I know you struggled through it, but you took courage. You went through it, you pressed on. A for effort, man, I give you a six. Awesome. All right, Jenny. I agree with Shane 100%. Your style and your look, your guitar is beautiful, but what you played and, and the, the parts that you got through, it was awesome. I knew, I know it's beautiful. If you take a breath, relax, pretend like none of us are here, 
I know that you've probably practiced this and it sounds beautiful and it is probably spot on. So I do applaud you and I still, maybe before the end of the night, would love to hear you sit and play when you're not feeling so pressured, okay? I would love to hear that song. I'm going with the seven. All right, G-Man, what you got? I just have a question first, the, the feather. Um, oh, yeah! Why? <laughs> is there a story behind that? Is that just... I think someone found it. It was like, there you took your car. Hey, like, all right, cool. that's someone in the name. It's a great story. <laughs> all right! <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you did try with the, 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 like I said, A forever. You did, you did I mean, I like the, you kept going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, that, that, it does take a lot to keep going. So uh, I, I second what uh, Rhonda said. If you want to, you know, come back up, uh, we can hear it later when, you know, not so much pressure, the lights, you know, it's, we would love to hear it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a, a six, though. Uh, awesome. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Sam. All right, so far, we're halfway through. We are now at our intermission. Guys, feel free to go and help yourselves to our snacks catered by Chick-fil-A. Go take a picture with our, our big, great cow in the back, and the music will start to cue you back in when it's time to start again. Thank you again. Wow, I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So good. All right, we're through the first so half of our EGT night. Okay, we got four more contestants ready to come and do their thing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the food and took plenty of pictures. All right, next, give it up for Poof. If your parents don't let you watch magic, you might have to leave the room. Because some serious magic is about to go down here. <laughs> okay, I'm out. That was a mic drop, by the way. <laughs> My name is Sophie. My name is Erica, and this is EGT, but honestly, it's Erica's not time. So. <laughs> We're doing magic, and honestly, no magic act is really complete without a bunny. So. Hello. Look at that bunny, oh my god. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so for our first, first act, we're gonna um, make water disappear. So, that's awesome. So we're gonna pour the water in one of the cups. It's real water, I promise. Okay, so we're gonna mix up the cups and y'all have to guess which cup the water's in. Just try to follow the cup, okay? As best as you can. Which one has the water? Yo. 
We're gonna mix it up one more time. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Which one has the water? Yes, this one has the water. Just a little more. Which, which one has the water? Who wants to come up? Anybody? Just walk up. Okay, you know. It's a little late. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Nice. What water? <laughs> what water? that non-existent water that's right okay we have another trick it also has water okay so Sophie is gonna take water, water. <laughs> y'all don't know if it's our it's our favorite thing it's ever real water. it's real water okay so she's gonna put the water in this miniature jar um, that we got from somewhere and she from crackle barrel shout out to you and we're gonna put it in the jar. And the water, you know how like when you take water and you like pour it and it all comes out because that's gravity? Um, it's not gonna happen today. She's gonna stop gravity. Ready? Here we go. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Oh, yeah! Okay, wait, we're gonna make it pour now. Ooh. Oh, yeah! Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for our final act, this one's a little... we need a volunteer. Another volunteer. Ada, come up to the stage. Okay, hold on. Okay, maybe we should move this out the way. Okay, so this is a pen. Hopefully, y'all know what this is. Um, and then this is a, <laughs> a random piece of paper. It has nothing on it, as you can see, judges. Nothing on it. And Ada's gonna take this random piece of paper. And she's going to go and she's going to put a number on it, but she's not going to show the crowd, okay? So, now, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to go up to judges, but I guess I am. Okay, so I need Mr. Greg to take 21 cards out. 21 cards off the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, so on. <laughs> 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21. Oh, 21. There you go. Okay, so Mr. Shane is now going to make sure Mr. Greg is right, just in case. Um, yeah. <laughs> so much pressure. Pressure's on. Okay. Wait, I think those Was that 20? Okay. One, more time. One, more time. one more time. We should do it one, one more time, time, just in case. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. No. Oh no. Okay. Okay. So. So now I'm gonna take this deck of twenty-one cards. Those twenty-one cards. Three piles. <laughs> Okay. Three cards. Now she's going to pick card, a card from one of those. And you can show the audience if you want to. Yeah, I'm not going to look. Don't look. Do you all see her card? Mm hmm Okay. 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 Did everybody, everybody good? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'll take your card. He's now going to shuffle. He's going to shuffle our cards. Nice and shuffled. There are three even piles. Ooh. It's, it's, it's 
It's it's okay. really risky. So so yeah. I'm gonna I need to read your mind, Miss Jenny, for your card. Oh, but I'm not gonna do it. With that. Okay, so I'm ready. I Please, need you go. before I try to read your mind. You need wait. <laughs> you need to take your hand and you're gonna put it over the cards to make a connection. And then when you finish, you need to just stomp your hands on, on the on whichever pile. pile you think your card the is card. in. Piles and then smack my hand down, right? On whichever so, card you think, whichever thing you think yeah. your card is in. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just gotta make a connection. Yeah, Machine. Woo! Woo! Rock and Rhonda. Oh, sorry. Ro yeah, Rock and Rhonda. Okay. okay. She picked that pile. Okay. Is your card in this pile? <laughs> Very possibly. Yes or no? <laughs> I think it's a yes. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna do this. Okay, two more times. I gotta make sure. Remember, you, you don't have to be right. You don't have to be right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Make yep. Do the same thing. Yes. Make a connection. Yep. I really hope we're not in the camera. Okay. Oh, we are. The camera's right oh, we there. Are. We really. <laughs> In there. In the I sure hope it's in there. It is in there. Okay. Okay. So one more time. One more time. Yep. We definitely do. No. We definitely do. Okay. Go ahead and do that one more time. Okay. Come on. I know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You're really going to make a connection. Okay. 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 We feel confident. So, like is it there? <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow. Okay. Okay. What? So, you know, I now think y'all are the real magicians. Okay. okay. So, we might be so wondering. Real magician, me or you? I mean, it's, oh, it's definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Why did we leave her up here by herself? We're going to give you an answer. What up? <laughs> um. Her card is somewhere in this deck. Do y'all agree that it's like, who knows where it could be, honestly. But before she wrote a number, that number was 21, 12. 12. <laughs> okay. So, one, two, three, four, pressure's on, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, is this your card? It is? Oh! oh wow. Well. Three times today <laughs> doing this card. Shh, nobody's gonna know. <laughs> and that is it. Thank you. I am so sorry. Woo! Yeah! yeah. For the people who have to clean this mess. All right, give it up for Poof so and the Magic sorry. Rabbit. For whoever has to clean this. All right, stay right here, guys. Stay right here. Stay right here. A little soaked over here. It's a little messy. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on She's up here. Such a good rabbit. Oh my god. All right, we're gonna start with Greg. Uh, I'm still. You gotta ask some questions. Give me some time yeah. to formulate yeah. my comments. You gotta, you gotta interview him a bit. Let me. Okay. Um, first of all, what's your name? Rabbits aren't supposed to talk. <laughs> How long have you been doing magic? Five minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, it's um, been like three about, weeks. Like two days. I mean, we just learned this magic trick, so I mean, all of them. So. Hey, cool. Yeah. yeah. Where'd the water go? It disappeared. And I wish I could tell you, but I can't. So. A, a true magician never reveals his secret, so I I understand. Okay. All right. You ready, Greg? Think so. All right. The bunny. Like the feather. Why? Magic show always has a bunny. Oh, good answer. That's very true. That's very true. That's very true. All right, I, I 
that, that, that was good. I, I, I genuinely did not think you were going to get the car. You seemed as surprised with us, so I, I enjoyed that. I, you know, um, we all saw the car together. You know, it was a true wow factor. So uh, uh, that was really cool. I liked that. Uh, uh, I, I would give it a, a seven. I don't know if it shows through. Good, nice, seven. All right, Jenny, what you got? Well, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking, I wasn't sure if this was a, a um, magic trick or, or a comedy act because you guys are hysterical. I mean, you were cracking me up and I kept, I was waiting to find out what's the bunny gonna do? Is he gonna start doing flips and cartwheels? Is he gonna, I don't know. I was waiting for him to have a role, I guess, in this. And that was, I really, I had zero confidence in myself about my own card, but then I did tell my buddy here, I was like, Okay, you saw the card too. And I was like, and then I said, if she ends up getting back to my card, I'm going to be pretty wowed. I was wowed. I was not expecting to count, you get to, you know, card number 12, and it'd be my little card. I have to say, it was pretty cool. And because I was a little bit wowed and a little bit like skeptical, I went with a nine. Woo! Nice. All right, a nine. Shane. Yeah, look, the bunny. The bunny, man. I, don't, I was the distracted bunny. by the bunny the whole time, but he kind of looks like the, uh, the marshmallow man at Ghostbusters, but yeah. the, the way he walked out on stage. But great, great act, bunny. Uh, you guys did really good. I, I like, like he said, you know, the, the shock when you faced the fact that you got the card was quite <laughs> hysterical. Uh, but r r really good teamwork. I know you were running around, and just like Jenny said, it was kind of funny and comical at the same time. So bravo, really good job. I give you guys an eight. Awesome. All right, great scores. Guys, give it up for him. All right, that was Poof. And up next, we have a classic Moonlight Sonata.
All right, great job, great job, great job. Come on up here, man. All right, Moonlight Sonata. You kind of mix a little old with a little new there. What was the motivation behind that, man? Um, my friend played it, and that sounded pretty cool. So I was like, I'm going to steal your idea. And then, um, yeah, the key kind of got stuck, but it's, it's fine. Oh, it's cool. It, sound, it still sounded really, really good. Was it hard to learn, like, was it learn to do, or hard to learn how to do that, or? Uh, yeah, it took a minute, but I figured it out. I definitely did not play great, but it's fine. How long have you been playing the piano? Um, since I was, like, nine. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right, here we go. We're not going to start with Big Bro first. We're going to start with Shane, and we'll save the best for last. All right, man. Look, uh, you, you kind of took me in right away when you first hit those keys. I thought it was great. It was elegant, and you kind of switched it up. I, I love the, the different, in, the change and the music and the sound. Um, but you, I know you struggled a little bit, but you worked through it. So bravo on that, man. Great job. I give you a seven. Yeah. Great school. Awesome. Jenny. Well, I, I uh, impressed. I thought it was pretty, and then when you changed it up, I too was kind of like, huh, what's that? What's going on? Is he about to like rock it out? Then it got smooth again, so I appreciated the variety. Don't know how much of it I really caught onto or <laughs> took in, but I applaud your efforts for getting up there and doing that because I sure as heck could not do it. So kudos to you, my friend. I'm going with the seven. Another seven, awesome. Big bro, what you got? What's your name, please? Wesley. Wesley what? Wesley and Mido. Mido? Mido. Mido. My do. My my do. My yes, okay. do. Sir. Uh, couldn't get that at first. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. He's the wow guy. Wow. So uh, wow. we started off with a little Moonlight, what is it? Moon, moon, moonlight Sonata. Moonlight Sonata. That, what, what was that next one? What was that second movement? <laughs> Could you enlighten the crowd? I'm just curious if you knew the name of it. I, I was, I was. Dr. J. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, it, like, he's, he's a doctor, like your dad, right? That, that, yeah, uh, gotcha, doctor. gotcha, okay, gotcha, makes sense, Dr. Dre. I haven't heard of him yet, but hope, you know, hope I don't have to see him, you know? Good health. <laughs> And then the third thing, was that also Dr. Dre? What was that? No, it was not. It was a song from a show I watched. Oh, what, what show is that by, by chance? Have you ever heard of this show? It's, it's like Naruto. Naruto? <laughs> no, what is that? Is that? Is this? It's a show about some kid with a fox inside of him. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's all right. All right. That sounded, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that, that was a... Uh... That was pretty good. That was, uh, it was interesting. You went from that to the doctor, the, the medical song. And then, um, and then the, uh, I did, and I know, it's, uh, he's enlightening us. Dr. Dre, I, you know, I haven't heard of him, but, uh, he must, he must be from out of town. He must, he must be out of town. He's one of those new guys. Right, right, right. Um, we'll hear him, we'll hear him. Yeah, this is surprising. This is actually the first time I've heard it, you know? Uh, I found out Wesley was performing today when he asked me to pick him up, to take him to this. <laughs> I, I'm roommates. We're Seriously? roommates. It's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a, sorry, I need a score. Uh, it, it was good, it was good. You know, you could, you know, oh yeah, I can talk to you for real. Yeah, you could do, you could, you could do a bit. Better. But you were good, yeah. you were good, you were good, man. You, you, uh, I'll give you a seven. I got a seven. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thanks, Wesley, give it up for Wesley. Good job, Wesley. All right, next we're gonna have stand-up comedy. Stand Up Comedy by Caroline. Give it up for Caroline, everybody. <laughs> Before we... Oh, okay. Music. Cute. Um, hey, guys. So before we start this little comedy act, Miss Jenny, you know I favor you so much. I'm not bribing, wink. But um, <clears throat> you are the sun to my sunflower. See what I did there? I know. Like y'all, too. But, uh... I know. I love y'all. Okay, anyway, I was actually asked to do a stand-up comedy act, and I'm like, okay, how do you do that? And I was thinking, do I read a million Laffy Taffies, or do I go online and read jokes? And I was thinking, that's not the way to do it. And, uh, oh, look, hey, Dad. Sorry. Look, <laughs> big deal. Okay, anyway, um, I was thinking what to do, so I'm trying to think of what's actually funny in my life besides my love life. And I was like... 
Wow, I was thinking, and it's my mom, honestly. Uh, she's not here. She ain't going to get her feelings hurt or anything, Dad. Shh. And uh, it's a funny thing. So while we're in the church, we're going to talk about one of the fruits of the Spirit, patience. Who struggles with patience? Yeah, me, right here. But every time I go in a food line anywhere, they always get my order wrong. Every time. One time I went to Jimmy John's and I'm with my mom and I was like, I need two turkey toms. And they gave me like four Billy Club sandwiches. That don't even sound the same, but that's just how it happens. And uh, then we go to McDonald's. I asked for like, um, uh, you know, what is it? McBurger. What is it? Mc Big Mac. Thank you so much. And uh, literally you just get something completely different like a chicken sandwich. And I've been thinking like, what is patience? So picture this. One day me and my mom were going to Mr. Po'boy. Everyone knows what Mr. Po'boy is, right? Okay, yeah, really good roast beef. But anyway, uh, we were going to Mr. Po'boy, and we waited in that line. I mean, waited, like forever, it felt like, but, you know, patience. And uh, we pull up, and I was, she was like, what did y'all order? And I was like, um, a six-inch roast beef po'boy. And you could just see my mom, like the flames starting to come out like this, and she's starting to sweat, and it's like a big deal. So I'm trying to think, God, please calm her down, because I don't want her to say anything rude. And uh, it's a big deal. So the lady ends up giving me my po'boy, and she's like, oh, you wanted it dressed? And I was like, yes, ma'am. But I'm like, if you didn't put tomatoes on it, it's okay. We have to leave. And uh, so we get home, and we go, and it was fried shrimp. But really, that's <laughs> no big deal. Not dressed, not the right meat, but it's okay. And it got me thinking, um, patience, what is it? And then it brought me back to a time when I was younger. And think back to parents. I get in trouble often, but I'm a great kid. So, but I'm not full of myself, really humbled. And uh, my parents have to have a lot of patience with me, honestly. And something I am still guilty of is you shove everything under the bed, throw it in the closet, kick off the boots. I mean, like, it's a, it's a thing. And... My parents, when they were younger, used to try to reward me. You know what they did? They went to PetSmart with me and told me that we're at the zoo. Free zoo. And uh, I was like thinking now, I'm like, you lied, but it's okay. And uh, then we'd go to Chuck E. Cheese, great family time fun, and uh, no tokens, just play around. And really, like, is that kind of the joy of life? But anyway, it's like a game. You know, patience is a game. The end. So there is my comedy act. So, yep. Yeah. Totally unprepared. All right. Good job, Caroline. Great job. Great job. Gracias. I'm fluent. All right. So, you, I didn't know you were a comedian. Me neither. Kind of a new thing? Yeah, new thing. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no, you did great. What's up, Coach? How you doing, Coach Butch? Yeah, I, like the, I, like, I like the way you got up here. You got up here confidently, um, kind of just put the script together. A comedy act is not an easy thing to do. It's not. You did a great job, okay? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, Shane, you, you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready, I'll do it. Um, I wasn't, but yes, I'll do it now. Uh, look, great job, I think the way you flowed throughout the entire segment, I thought it was really fantastic. You were just on top of it consistently. Uh, obviously, you were funny, you had everybody laughing. Um, I didn't get a flower, so you're gonna, I'm gonna knock a point down. So, I'll give you a nine. <laughs> He wanted a flower. All right, flower child. You are my sunshine, my, my only sunshine. See, I go from rock and Rhonda to like something else. Well, I don't even know what genre that was, but you are so confident and quirky and clever. I love that you said hi to your dad in the back. Like, go dad. Dad's a rad. And your mom wasn't here, so that was okay because you can make fun of mom. I hope you don't make fun of me. I hope you don't make fun of me. But that's okay, I thought, I thought your act was, you can make fun of me anytime you want to. I thought your act was cute, I thought it was fine. I'm gonna go with an eight. Awesome, great score so far. All right, Big G, what you got? I too did not receive a flower. Um, Should've brought more flowers. It was a big flower too, so I feel like three smaller flowers also would have to stop you, actually. You know that flower wasn't mine. It was a prop for that other act. And I was like, oh, I'm going to use that because you, it was the thought. It really, and it's the thought that counts in life. Right, Coach Nate? That's true. Don't yeah. feel the pressure to give in to these two. My flower means everything. You see how happy she sounds with a flower? That could have been me. I, 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 I could have had a whole flower just... I'll share with you. No, it was good. It was funny. I had a good time. It was a... Uh... I too share your, your, your frustrations with uh, 
not getting the right email. If you wanted a roast beef po' boy and someone gave me an undressed shrimp, shrimp po' boy, right. whew, that's good you have patience, I'll just say it like that. that. That is a talent right there, so. Uh, hey, awesome. All right, guys, give it up for Caroline. And now um, I'm welcoming out my buddies from my band, Coach Nate. All right, and next up, A-OK. -okay. Am I supposed to tell a joke? Tell a joke. Please don't. I just said no. I'm hurrying. Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. There's a table that you prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me And this is how I fight my battles And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song of praise for what you've done In fire and wind, come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven on in Come rest on us Come rest on us So come Fight my battles, and this is how I fight my battles, and this is how I fight my battles, and this is how I my victories in Jesus' name, and my victories in Jesus' name. stars that you out the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was falling his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of heaven comes upon him and the ground began to shake the stone was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King Has rendered you defeated Forever He is glorified Is risen. He is alive. 
Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Jeez, y'all get up here. Come on up here. Come on. Come up here. All right, great job. Great job, guys. You and you, you're just a triple threat over there, huh? You're a comedian. You're, you're a singer. You're an athlete, right? I've heard, right? You're an athlete too, right? All right, guys, and again, if you guys didn't know, this is Abby, Olivia, and Caroline, which makes A-OK, if you guys didn't know. I thought that was super clever, and I like how y'all got in order, because I would have not thought of that unless y'all did it. Thank you. <laughs> and you guys sounded great. Your vocals were amazing. Your range, um, I, like, that was, that was beautiful. You guys did an amazing job. Greg, you're going to start off with this one, bud. That was great. Uh, you got some harmonies. Harmonies were great. Some med medleys, they were great uh, all around. I love the sound. A OK, okay. did not know what that meant. We all were positive. It was just like, yeah, we're just, you know, we're, we're A OK. You know, we're just, you know, <laughs> yeah, good attitude, but you know, you want to be great, you know, you want to be, but A OK, love it. Um, it I'll, I'll give it a nine. I'll, that was really good. Very good. Yeah. All right, next, Jenny. Coming again, Rock and Rhonda coming at you. I like I like that it was a mashup. You right mashup. You see, I'm with you. I knew what you were doing up there. The transitions that were relatively smooth. Sometimes they were a little, uh, but I knew exactly where you were going. I was singing along. I thought it was good. The guitar thing at the end. That's okay. It, that's it, that's what we do. We just we just go with it. You're just a spirit takeover, and you would just on the ground with the guitar. It was great. I thought it was good. Going with a nine. Woo! Nine. All right, Mrs. Scott, what you yeah, got? Look, I agree with what they're saying. I think you have an angelic voice. I think it was great. I love the way you guys switched it up in between, and and, and obvious, obviously the the thing that did it for me though that put it over the top was the leg down at the end of the guitar. I give you a 10. <laughs> Guys, don't see too many of those. Guys, give it up for A-OK. -okay. All right, so go ahead and put your votes down on your papers if you haven't already. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to do that. All right, and as you finish that, go ahead and pass them to the middle aisle. We'll get those collected. Hey, whoa, 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 ain't no bribing, ain't no bribing, no bribing, no bribing. You get kicked out for that. All right. While everything is being totaled, we have a special light coming up. Um, it's actually their debut. Give it up for Shane Scott, Jenny McCharge, Rockin' Rhonda, and Greg Mido. Come on up! You guys are the next act! Woo! Oh man, welcome, welcome, welcome. So while they're totally to the points, you guys have been over here smug in your little chairs with your little microphone, judging people, and I think tonight we should judge the judges. What do y'all say? Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a little improv and these judges, one of them has the chance to win the highly coveted, the owl rageous ivory owl of who ma Talon Award. It's right there next to the Oscar, right here. This is what one of the judges gets to win. Uh, let me set up the scene for you guys. I'm going to give you a scene. And I've got a little bucket over here with one-liners. And what's going to happen is, amidst the scene, you will pull these one-liners out, and you got to roll with whatever you read. All right, so let me, let me set up the scene for us a little bit here. First of all, uh, Jenny, you're going to be a doctor at a doctor's office. So here, here's some. And uh, push your glasses down on the end of your nose, you know, looking very doctor-esque. Oh, and here's a little file. You're going to have to come in and diagnose stuff. And if Mr. Mido, if you come stand next to Shane, we're going to set the scene a little bit. Now, Greg, my man Greg over here, he ate a Tide Pod, and he grew an identical Siamese twin, Mr. Shane Scott. So we're going to tie 
Please tie this around your waist. Tie yourselves together. You want me to tie from back here? Yeah. All right. I'm basically completely hidden. No one can see me. You guys. <laughs> All right. like a crazy I know. Yeah. Now you guys have come into the doctor's office. Hey, look, we have chairs for you for the waiting room. Enjoy. And we're gonna we're gonna give you a you know three, two, one, and then go and and y'all have fun. I'll give you the mic, I guess. And we'll go from there. And I'll bring the bucket to you, and you can just pull lines out as you go. Are you ready for this? Take it away. Hey, bro. How's it going? Uh, uh, doctor, uh, uh, how are you doing today, baby? I'm doing What would you like to eat today, doctor? No soup for you. <laughs> go back or go home. What else can I help you? <laughs> we, uh, as my brother was saying, no soup for you. Yes, um, it hurts. It, uh, it's, 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 uh, there's a description I'm about to give you, and it's going to accurately describe, okay. and, um, but, but, why does it hurt? Why, why does it hurt? Why, why does our stomach hurt? I'm a moose, I'm a moose. and see if I have the right information here. Yeah, I'm a moose. I'm a moose. <laughs> I'm going to go with a different diagnosis. We're going to go with this one. Oh, my grandma has one tooth. Right? Right? Right. I We, we, we thought we saw something. Sorry. <laughs> All right. That was the first. Now we're getting to the one that I'm really excited about. Can we bring out the table and the phones? We definitely got it. Now this next one, we're going to take it up a notch. You can sit in these three chairs. It's actually perfect. The three of you are running an advice hotline. But your jobs are to give not good advice, bad advice, and the worst advice on this advice hotline. And what's going to happen is, after we go through each one, you're going to switch seats. So, Greg, you'll come to where Shane is, and you all slide down. Does that make sense? And uh, so your first call came in. Shane, why don't you pick up the phone? You're going to give not good advice. Is, I saw my own obituary in the newspaper. Everyone thinks I'm dead. What should I do? I saw my own obituary in the newspaper. Everyone thinks I'm dead. What should I do? <laughs> um, you should definitely go to the funeral. Uh, go incognito. Obviously, you put a hat, glasses, wig, uh, and point out the people who actually care for you, people that, who mourn for you. Uh, you know, stay in the background. Make sure you're not recognized. But definitely take a booklet, tablet with you, pen, and write the names down who mourned for you. If, if they did not scratch them off, they're no longer your friends, they're no longer your family, you're done with them. And then afterwards, uh, you know, come out and say, hey guys, I'm alive. And be done. That's it. That's your advice. All right, Jenny, it has to be worse. It's got to be worse than that. It has to be worse. Okay, this is what we're going to do. You are going to show up 
and you're going to bring a posse with you. Call everybody that you, that you can think of. Just, just call them. It may freak them out a little bit. It's okay. Just start calling people. Invite them to come with you to your own funeral. I know it's going to sound weird, I'm but alive. just trust me. Just trust me. Just go with it. I think maybe, maybe you should show up with like a tambourine, maybe some sunglasses, get a band together, come up with a song. Hey, how about you get some people together if you can convince them. Show up. Start like a band out in the parking Next. lot. Greg Mido, what's the worst possible advice? All right, it's very simple. <clears throat> you're going to the funeral, obviously, and you're taking names. Who didn't show up? I want you, I mean, you're... Uh, Repeat. Repeat. Oh. Give us something else. Oh. You're going to Barbados. You have no identity anymore. You have no responsibilities, no, you know, you don't have to worry about taxes, homework, Barbados. doing dishes. I mean, uh, especially that last one. The first two you can get over, but no more dishes, it's a miracle. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, the next one, y'all enjoy that. All right. The next caller says, I'm about to have a Bible study at my house and my parrot, like bird, my parrot's Previous owners only taught it curse words. The pastor is coming too. What do I do? Shane, take it away. Pass the mic down to Shane. Pass the mic on down. Awesome. Yeah, look, so the bird, uh, he's got to go. Simple as that. Let's, uh, let's kill him and be done with it. Eat him. That's a wrap. <laughs> Next. Worst advice. Okay, pastor's going to be here in 10 minutes, this bird, foul language. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get some little, cute, teeny, tiny, like, washi tape, and I think we're just going to wrap it around his beak. We're going to stick him in the back. Worst case scenario, we can just put him in a bag, throw a bag over him or something. Um, I don't know, worst case scenario, we'll just, we'll let him loose somewhere. I mean, surely, like, somebody will take him in. Somebody will feel sorry for a little bird with cute little washi tape Next. on his beak. Okay, don't overreact, calm down. Burn the house down. You have a second one in Barbados. You're gonna relocate it, buy everyone tickets, not spirit, you want them to live. You wanna take them all, you're gonna reschedule it, Barbados, Bible study, amen. Very nice, very nice. Did y'all enjoy that? All right, how are we doing on the points? We're almost done? I've got one more, if we're not done yet. Are you guys ready? <laughs> I've actually have many more, so depending on how long it takes them to total. Are you ready for this? Oh, man, this one? Okay, I'm going with my favorite. I'm in labor, but I don't want my baby born on leap year. What do I do? We have to assume that it's the day before leap, or it's leap year. Don't push. Wait it out. Hold, hold on. Do not, um, we're not going to the hospital. Just hang on. Do, stay in labor. Uh, definitely don't move. Don't do jumping jacks or anything. Let's just hold on. Um, yeah, peace out. Okay, so you're going to do a handstand because we got to keep that sucker in there as long as we can. So I'm going to need you to get some friends, hold you up against the wall, feet in the air, somebody to hold the gown, you know, where it's, it's appropriate, but we are not having the baby. Just, you know, maybe even like, you know, have your friends like just put their hands on your belly and we're just going to like push towards the ground, like gravity. Surely it's got to work in our favor because remember, you're, you're in a handstand. We're in a handstand, right? Okay. Wow. All right. So remember those spirit points you got? Okay, you're going to need them. We're going Tokyo. Tokyo is over the dateline, so you will not have to worry about being born on leap year. Now, Japanese baby, I mean, it's going to work out. I'm telling you. It's, uh, you might not know anything about the culture, the country, but you made a goal. You stuck with it, and uh, congratulations. Well done, well done. How are we doing on the points? Are we almost done with the points? I'm not even sure which direction I'm being cued from. I've got more questions. All right, all right, all right, here we go. Oh man, there's so many good ones in here. I'm in a changing room at the mall. Someone stole my pants over the door. Hey, hey, somebody help. Hey, hey, I need some pants. Oh, I can put my shirt around me at least maybe. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so you have no pants and you're in the dressing room. So you can just stay there. You can just stay there. Eventually the store will close. They'll lock up. Everybody's going to leave. And then you just bust out. And I know the alarm's going to go off and they'll probably call the cops and all that good stuff. You'll end up in jail. But we'll just work around that situation later. Because right now you have no pants. You just have to stay where you are. Wait it out. Don't leave. Stay where you are. (laughs) Who cares? Everyone thinks you're dead. No one knows who you are. They're going to think you're a crazy person. I mean, it's... And then guess what they're going to do? They're going to say, it's that person we don't know. Walking around with no pants. Go on. I mean, yeah, just just go home. I mean, I don't know why you came back to a mall. Barbados was chilling, man. I mean, it was 80 degrees. Just a nice breeze. Oh, man. Very nice, very nice. Points yet? Points? All right, I think we should have them change seats. Come on, I want to see Shane give some bad advice. I want to hear Jenny give the worst advice. Let's change seats a little bit. Change seats a little bit. Points? Anybody? No points? All right, here we go. Are we ready? Yep, you just give, like, just not good advice. That's right. And then we're going to bad and then the worst possible advice. Here we go. My four-year-old's fish just died. Four-year-old's favorite fish just died. What should I do? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, just flush it down the toilet, get a new fish. I mean, don't all fish look alike? I mean, it's a fish. It's in water. It's orange. Just, you know, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going with. I'm going with just flush it, get a new fish, four-year-old, never know. All right, here's what you're going to do. Preheat the oven 350 degrees. You're going to want to have that fish on the board, salt, pepper, just a bit of lemon, and just add a little zest to it, you know. If you want to stuff it, you can be fancy. I mean, I'm working that on. Worst possible advice. So, yeah, look, I uh, went fishing today, and I caught about five trout, and uh, we could throw that one in there, too, a little fish fry. We got, we got that, no problem. <laughs> Give them a hand. They're doing great. Do we have points? No points. All right, switch seats one more time. I'm having fun. You guys having fun? This is great. Bring, bring. I'm at a party, and I clog the toilet with my phone. With my phone. What do I do? How are we having this conversation? You've, you've clearly made a decision. Um, I mean, wash your hands, and uh, I'm assuming the phone is in your hands, so unless your hand's stuck in the toilet, or, I mean, God forbid you've done the other option. I mean, just, uh, yeah, um, if you have an option. So look, go ahead and get something to scoop out the, the, the substance of the toilet, put it out, get your hand in there, and grab your phone. That's how you get the phone out. <laughs> Okay, splash water all over your face and all over your hair and just run through the party screaming as loudly as you can. I clogged up the toilet. I clogged up the toilet. It doesn't matter if it was with the phone or not. Everybody's going to freak out. Just make a scene. Make a scene. Very nice. Very nice. Yes? Nope. Nope. Okay. Let's keep going. My fiance's dog ate my engagement ring. I don't want him to know that I lost it. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to be real. <laughs> it's gone. It's, I don't know what to <laughs> What you're going to tell her, it's a, you have a, uh, here's this ring. I love you so much. There's dog poop on this, but just ignore it. Just, I mean, like, it's, I don't know. Give her a handshake and uh, go on with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, that's the best you can do. <laughs> so, in about 24 hours, You should be saved. You're going to have to dig a little bit around in there, but surely that shiny thing will come out and you'll be okay. Okay, we got to take matters into our own hands. You know those cow birthing gloves? You've seen it on TV. You may have to go in and get the ring. This is big. This is big. You can't can't wait. There's no time to waste. Act now. Get you some gloves. Just get a friend to hold the dog still. Surely we can get the ring. I'm not coming to help you. No, you call somebody else. Call somebody else. But we can get the ring. Absolutely. Uh, That was was the most tasty answer. We good? We good? All right. 
I'm going to release you back to your judges table and bring my man Nate out for the final awards announcements. If I could have some stage hands to move the tables back, that would be awesome. All right, you guys ready to hear the winners? All right, X, when you hear your name, come on out to the stage. Can we get a drum roll? I feel like a drum roll is supposed to happen right now. I'll try not to pull a Steve Harvey right here. Somebody caught that one. All right, here we go. In fourth place, we are going to be friends. Here we go, in third place. Sanctified Six. Come on down, fellas, good job. In second place, we have A-O-K. -okay. And our grand prize winner goes to Baby Baby. Are you guys go ahead and get in order? Yeah, Baby Baby right here. You okay? All right, so. Before we finish out, we'd like to thank Living Word Church for providing us this venue to be able to do this. Give it up for Living Word Church. Appreciate you guys. We'd like to thank um, Mr. Noah Hendon for being our Mr. Cow and being a great cow tonight. We'd like to also thank Chick-fil-A for providing the food and give it up for Miss Shirley Smith as well for making all this possible. All right. Let's see the prize. All right, so as we mentioned before, the winners get to go ahead and pick what you guys want. We have six tickets to the swamp. We have six tickets to break in the code. We have six tickets to Adventure Quest Laser Tag and NOLA. And we got a six foot candy bar, okay? The grand prize winner, Baby Baby, what you guys, what you guys want? Breaking the code? All right, second place, A-OK. -okay. Wait, wait, we need a minute. No, wait, no, he's going to get the swamp. Come on, let's turn. Okay, swamp. Come on. All right, there you go. Thank you. I was going with the All right, third place, Sanctified Six. You got between Adventure Quest and Laser Tag. Great choice. Great choice, Laser Tag. And the six-foot candy bar goes to We Are Going to Be Friends. Guys, we'd like to thank y'all all for coming out. Um, this was a great EGT this year. It's something that we definitely want to do for years and years to come. And that's only possible because you guys show up and uh, give these guys just a great, a great show as well as I'm giving you guys a great show. We'd like to call up all the contestants at this point. You guys come on up. No, we're not doing a flash mob. Unfortunately not. All the contestants coming up. Give it up for all the contestants. All right, you guys are going to come up. If you guys want to get any pictures, go ahead and step up, step up, step up, step up, step up. Get in there, Mr. Cow.
Got our pitchers. All right, we'd like to do one more bow, one curtain call. Everyone do your bow. You all did great. Very good, very good. Lord, I pray that you bless, bless these people, bless these men and women of God. Lead them in your ways. Let them have a safe trip home and a great week. Amen. And we're going to wrap with an onstage dance party.